Welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Hand jiving was invented right here in Soho, London, back in the 1950s at the Cat's Whisker Coffee Bar. So packed was the club that it was impossible to dance, and so the hand jive was born. Today, it is the floor of the brokerages and exchanges, which are so packed with fraud that it's impossible to commit fraud without bumping into more fraud. And so the hand jive of fraud has been born. Stacy. Hand jiving, Max. That's this episode. <laughs> really? Let's, let's see if I got that. Am I, is this the step? Really? This is, this is the fraud command. <laughs> Everyone's got to be in jive. Bum, 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 bum. La -da 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 -da. And it involves a lot of this. Phone call, phone call from the Fed. Phone call from Fanny Freddy. Yeah, I got the tap on the shoulder. Busted. Well, the phone call from Fanny and Freddy the two mortgage giants in America, the government-sponsored entities that own most of the mortgages in America now. Well, it's actually when they call the floor of the exchange that everybody, there's a special call, apparently, signal that everybody on the floor knows that this is a call coming in from Fannie and Freddie. They're going to buy some interest rate swaps and it's time to front run them. The headline reads, are Wall Street traders using secret hand signals to manipulate derivatives? Wall Street traders may be manipulating a key derivatives market and front running Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, hurting the U.S owned mortgage giants in the process, according to an FBI intelligence bulletin reviewed by Reuters. So they're using unsophisticated tradecraft, they call it the hand jiving, <laughs> and uh, these uh, telephone calls using a specific ringtone when it's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac calling to put in their huge interest rate swap orders. And the interest rate swap market, just so you know, is $400 trillion market. Right, so it's uh, Fannie and Freddie, huge government, entity essentially a government backed entity and uh, they do a lot of business and it's the american people yes. who, who are calling the floor of the exchange yes and then the traders are like down there like belly laughing ha ha ha, ha. here comes mr and mrs jones let's let's cut them nuts off again by giving them a terrible execution and stealing all their money uh well yeah the hand jive the hand signals ringtones it's it's um an interesting environment, the floor of the stock exchange. It's a, it's like a, just a vast, knee-deep pool of scum. <laughs> well, the FBI says that, it, in particular, there's a whistleblower from one bank. They don't mention the bank which is doing this, is involved in this. But this U.S. bank, a trader from there, is the one that was whistleblowing on them. And he said there's a specific ringtone that uh, traders know are conspiring to rig rates on large orders submitted by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac or front-running them in the interest rate swaps market. But the FBI, Max, said despite all this proof, this evidence that they've been submitted, that they have low confidence that law enforcement could prosecute suspected traders because the trades concern seemed to be completely legitimate. Completely legitimate to front-run the American taxpayer on these hundreds of billions of dollars of orders. Right, to steal money. Yeah. To steal money. It's, it's stealing front, money. What front it's money. fraud. Yeah. The ringtone could be jingle bells. Yes. Jingle bells, jingle bells, it's Christmas time for us. All you people who are fat schmucks and we're stealing all your cash. The FBI, the FBI, they're in our pocket. We give them a bonus every year and they do whatever we want, whatever we want. The FBI are crooks too. The FBI are... Yeah, it's funny. It's a farce. It's American justice is a, is a farce. The FBI is... I think the cost of bribing the FBI has gone down. There's your deflation. The cost of bribing FBI has gone down in America under Obama's America. There's your deflation. Of course, probably the FBI and the NSA, of course, are listening in and know which ringtone and know probably they're probably front running as well. Now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were prior to the collapse of the subprime mortgage market. Remember, they were they claimed on all their bonds that they're, they're not backed by the government, they're government sponsored entities, but we do not, we won't back these bonds, we won't pay you 100 cents out in the dollar. But because of the size of the fraud, remember they were jam packed with fraud, and they were jamming, jiving, hand fraud, jiving, and they had to take over. So the whole mortgage market in America is backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, owned by the taxpayer. So. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which are government-sponsored enterprises, often submit large swap orders to hedge their huge holdings of home mortgages against swings in the bond market. The size of the orders provide an incentive for front-running ahead of the trades. So the FBI bulletin, this is a bulletin that went out to various participants in market and said that uh, these were lucrative targets 
for market manipulation, the trades that were put in by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But again, they reiterated it's, it's perfectly legal in their interpretation of the law. All right, so let's, he's got a buoy in the water floating, and there's a ship about to pass by the buoy. That's the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac orders coming to the floor. Then you get to make a bet on if that buoy is going to go up or not based on the presence of this enormous ship sailing by the buoy. It's a 100% guaranteed trade. So, of course, you borrow money from the central bank and the others on Wall Street, and they'll lend it to you at 0% interest to make an, a bet of any size you want on a sure 100% guaranteed thing that this is going to happen in the next five minutes. Oh, and by the way, if for any reason it doesn't work out and you lose a penny, you get to go down to Congress like Hank Paulson did, put a gun to the president's head and said, give me a trillion dollars. That's the other alternative. You, you get to either bilk, uh, you get to steal, and it's all under the FBI noses who, like the SEC, are addicted to porn. <laughs> well, a few things here. First of all, the Brits say boy instead of buoy for some reason. Uh, second of all, this is the hand jive of fraud. The, the market of fraud is so packed with fraudsters, all the exchanges, all the markets. So this Fannie and Freddie being front run, that's one fraud on top of all these other frauds because, of course, the mortgage rates are set by LIBOR rates, which are being rigged here in London, and the ISDA fix is setting interest rate swap rates, which is also being rigged here in London. So they're rig after rig after rig after market manipulation is jam-packed with Right. Banking fraud. You know, a lot of people say, if it's so obvious and so clear, why aren't more people doing it or why aren't, why am I not doing it? You know, I, of course, did that for many <laughs> years, as I've said on the show. But I think there are still people out there. Because remember, when you engage in a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac front-running scheme and you do this type of, uh, engage in this type of trading, you're putting money into su the suicide bankers' pockets mm -hmm. who are committing uh, genocide. So, Max, we're talking about this uh, hand jive of fraud. Now we're going to cut to another headline about, remember I said that here we have layer upon layer of fraud just on these Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac interest rate swaps they're buying. Here, metals, currency rigging worse than LIBOR, Baffin says. Germany's top financial regulator said possible manipulation of currency rates and prices for precious metals is worse than the LIBOR rigging scandal, which has already led to fines of about $6 billion. The allegations about the currency and precious metals markets are particularly serious because such reference values are based, unlike LIBOR and EURIBOR, typically on transactions in liquid markets and not on estimates of the banks, Elke Koenig, the president of Baffin, said in a speech in Frankfurt. So here, even these giant liquid markets, he's saying, these are being, these are being manipulated or rigged. It's not just these LIBOR and EURIBOR, which are set by a cabal of, of a small group of bankers. Even these giant liquid markets are able they're able to rig them and that's one of the arguments that uh you know defenders of rigging the the the, the guys who are hand jiving fraud those people will say well you can't rig these markets because there's buyers and there's sellers and there's liquid and blah 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 look the, the shadow banking system we know is at least as big as the visible banking system so it's at least 60 trillion dollars in size and we know that the cost of borrowing money in the shadow banking system is zero and we know that people who work in the shadow banking system, there is no limit to the amount of uh, money they can borrow to manipulate a market. We saw this in Greece. They totally destroyed that country. We saw this in Ireland. They totally destroyed that country. The TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, is the same shadow banking system borrowing unlimited amount of money, 0% interest to do a leveraged buyout of planet Earth, essentially. And there's no regulators. There's no uh, public discourse. There's no pushback against this. The um, regulators are examining how traders who communicated in instant message groups exchanged information on client orders and agreed how to trade at the time of the fix. So they're also joining um, investigators, regulators from the UK, US, and Switzerland, of course, where Davos is, where all these guys are hand jiving together on the disco floor all drunk. And what are the chances that they're actually going to investigate the guy that they're having caviar with tonight and drinking champagne? And then they're chatting on the dance floor, communicating with each other. I have to investigate you. What should I say to the people paying our salaries to pretend we're investigating you? And the banker says back, just tell them to bleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very, very, very specific hand gesture there. Hand jiving. Old school, yes. I might say. Yes. Uh, there is no uh, Davos uh, forum on regulatory fidelity, I can assure you. 
There's no, for, there's no panel in Davos this year on uh, legal uh, solutions to what happens when your bankers commit fraud. No, none of that is taking place. It, as I've explained before, it's a, a weapons dealer swap. This is where I find people who deal weapons of mass financial destruction mm. yeah. go to trade. It's like a gun show uh, or, or in B B British aerospace or they have a, a show where they, they, they're showcasing stingray rockets or missiles and things. I mean, that's what Davos is. They're swapping different ways to commit massive financial fraud. And they get together, and then they, they, they the hookers, the price of hookers this year has never been higher. Well, I, I think Christy Lagarde, <laughs> an hour with Christy Lagarde this year has cost 70,000 euros. That's the most expensive I've heard. I'd love to see the uh, disco dance floor there because imagine the ringtones. As soon as somebody's ringtone goes off, oh my God, F Fanny and Freddie are placing an order. Let's go front round them. And there's a stampede to the cell phone tower, and, you know? Yeah, this is the Davos dance. So they get the white man dance where they're trying to, you know, <laughs> dance like a white man, right? Not like a farmer. And then the, the ringtone goes off like jingle bells, jingle bells. And then it's like, <laughs> then the dance is, hello, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Fraud, 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 I'm at Davos. Fraud, 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 I'm making money. Christy Lagarde is a crook. And then the ringtone goes off, off and then it's back to the white man farmer dance. <laughs> uh oh, there, there, there's, uh, you know, there's uh, a George Soros, you know. Eh, vomiting on somebody, some triple martini <laughs> kamikaze you had with so, us, Bellini. So Baffin is also investigating Deutsche Bank for rigging, uh, manipulating gold and silver prices. And now this, this regulator from Baffin says uh, that the issue is causing such a public reaction is understandable. The financial sector is dependent on the common trust that it is efficient and at the same time honest. <laughs> The central benchmark rates seem to be beyond any doubt, and now there is the allegation that they may have been manipulated. Oops, that's the that's the regulator hand shot. Oops, <laughs> didn't know. <laughs> it's like that copper tone sun tanning lotion. Remember the little girl with the Jody dog? Jodie Foster. The, jo the dog was pulling her bathing suit down, and you could see her little bare cheek. That you was know? Jodie Foster. That, that's the regulators in a, in a world today. Oh, is that my mom? <laughs> oh no. All right, Stacy, thanks. Thank you, Max. Stay tuned for the second half. A whole lot more. Hello, Tanya. Hello, dear. Well, tell me how you are and my little grandson. Hello. Hello? Hello? We've been cut off. I accept it as an eco-village, but the spiritual side there is destructive. I try to convince her, try to prove that it was a sect, that it's dangerous, that she had to leave. It was as though she had lost her mind. She will come back. I know it. And I will wait. Even if it means I must wait. Until my dying day. My name is Daniel Bush. I'm Harvin in Washington, D.C. Thank you, New Policies. Thanks, Senator. I'm Peter LaBelle. with us here on RT today. I'm Rory Sushin. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to Sandeep Jaitley of Faketa Research.com. Sandeep, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Thanks, Max. Big story of the past week, I think, is the fact that China the officials have announced that they've gone from 1.1 thousand tons officially of gold reserves, mm. something like 2.7 thousand tons. It's a huge jump, biggest jump we've seen in decades for any sovereign. What are your initial thoughts? My initial thoughts are that uh, it's a good thing, obviously, for them to be doing. And uh, I don't know what end they have with the gold accumulation, but uh, they're, they're following 
sort of sensible leads from the people. Okay, let me ask this, Andy, because uh, that's a lot of gold. We know that it's much more than the annual production of gold. And we know, in fact, that it's more gold than was even on the open market yeah. to be sold by various institutions, even the IMF, et cetera, when you yeah. add it all up. They somehow managed to get more gold than there was available for purchase. Therefore, there is only one conclusion. States like the United States are selling China their gold. A lot of people have speculated that America is selling China its yeah. gold. Now we have proof. Uh, also, we also hear from sources that they are actually sitting right now on five to 6,000 tons and their goal is to get to eight to 10,000 tons and therefore be in control of the biggest cash hoard or gold hoard in the world. So why is America selling China its gold and is that the stupidest freaking thing they could ever possibly do? Uh, Max, it's not like they, they have a choice in the matter. You know, you have to maintain assuming that they are selling them their gold and if they are selling them their gold um, uh, you, it, it's, they, they don't have any choice you have okay. to maintain the exchange in gold and if someone wants to exchange dollars for gold then you have to get the gold America's economy is so wobbly and mm. so uh, infested with accounting fraud and debt what, what, we're, what, you, what you, I hear you saying here a little bit is that they're trying to cover some of their bad debts just like a, a gambler yeah. who's in over his head has to sell the gold watch at the pawn shop. So America is going to the Chinese pawn shop and selling its gold so that China doesn't foreclose on America, is what we're saying. Something like that. But not only China. It's, it's, the, it's, it's everybody that's buying gold is basically calling foreclosure on America. So the Indian people are behaving like the Chinese government. You know, so everyone who behaves in that way is calling foreclosure basically you know paul krugman of the new york times recently said that the dollar is good because it's backed by men with guns did he yes he uh. didn't suggest that there was any economic soundness to the american economy that there was any intrinsic value to the u.s dollar but as many around the world have come to understand if they don't take the u.s dollar the U.S. Army will come and kill them. They found this out in Iraq. They found this out in Libya. They find this out all over the world. And an economist is saying that this is, this is a just reason to hold... Well, I don't know what, uh, what schools he went to. Uh, the but, American school. The yeah. American school, or the school of the Americas. Yeah. It's a school that teaches people how to be CIA agents to go out to various countries around the world and whack folks. All right, mm. so let's get into uh, your, your kind of your day-to-day -day specialty a little bit over there with the Faketa folks. Now, you tweeted that gold doesn't have a spread under true free market action mm. and that all goods are spread against gold. All right, so getting into the nitty-gritty of the day-to-day -day of the gold world, speak on this a bit. Yeah, um, basically, uh, you have to go back to the Mengerian concept of marketability. Karl Menger. Karl Menger. Founder the of the Austrian school. Founder of the Austrian school. And uh, you take that concept of the most marketable good, and, uh, and the object that occupies that concept is gold. Now, most marketable means just that. You know, you can take it to any market and it will have an exchange for it, no matter where that market is, no matter what people you're dealing with, no matter what period of time you... Well, we're not time travelers, but you get what I mean. And going forward as well, it will still be a valid medium, the supreme medium of exchange. Nobody says no to gold. Nobody I can says go any no. Any market in the world, and I can get something for gold. Yeah, and nobody says no, and nobody will ever say no to gold as long as there are humans on the planet. That's just a theory of mine. I can't prove that, but it seems like there's a good, there's a good correlation, sort of. With so let's talk about the fact now that the there's a German regula regulatory authority this week who said that the price of gold is being manipulated, mm. with unimpeachably, uh, unequivocally, there's proof, uh, uh, and it's a bigger scandal than LIBOR. They say. They, of course, the forex market's being manipulated. The energy market's being yeah. manipulated. It's all being manipulated. So where does gold fit in in a world where every single price is rigged, mm -hmm. every single market is, is rife with naked short sales and counterfeiting? Yeah. So isn't that a reason maybe to shy away from gold, as people suggest, because they're saying, why should I even bother? It's such a rigged market. I'm just going to go down to the shop, buy a six-pack of beer and some Twinkies and gorge myself to death. It's understandable, especially after watching its price performance, even though that's not the price. But... Uh, 
you've hit the nail on the head, Max. When everything else is going mad, that's the only thing that will remain sane. And you will not be able to exchange um, sane things for insane things. So if you don't have gold at that juncture, whether it's in one year, two years, or, or five years, um, you'll realize the difference between having gold and not having gold. You might be able to get all of these other rubbish goods like, you know, $5,000 sweaters or whatnot, but you will not be able to get gold for dollars. There's another big story this week, or I should say follow-up to a story we've done on our show. I think we were the first international broadcaster to cover the fact that America uh, had sold off German gold mm -hmm. way before Germany recently asked for their gold back. Yeah. Uh, because, again, they've been rehypothecating and lending out gold to the point now where, uh, or just outright selling it to China, that America doesn't really have any gold in Fort Knox anymore. But Germany is now saying this gold market is, uh, is completely uh, manipulated. They were trying to repatriate their gold, and America said we can only do maybe 30 or 40 tons out of the, I think it was 700 or something on, yeah. this, on this magnitude. At what point does Germany say, well, we're, we, we want our gold? I mean, they, at, some, at some point, they're going to start being more demonstrative about this. They will, um, and I'm surprised that they're not, um, they're not being more vocal about it. Maybe... Professor Fekete says that they're not free agents from the wars, you know, so they have to behave in a certain way. I, I imagine there's an element of, of truth to that. But of, eventually, I forget about the German state, the German people will have had enough, you know, and that's when things uh, will get interesting. Um, if you say you want your gold back now and it, your, your banker turns around and says you can have it back in seven years, that would be grounds to uh, to declare uh, to call them in for bankruptcy. <laughs> it's a seven-year settlement date. Yeah. So it's like if I There's no to, question <laughs> about it. If I was on Wall Street and I said, give me, give me a thousand IBM, okay, okay, you're done. You'll get the uh, confirm in seven years. Yeah. <laughs> it's not There's exactly no a functioning market, is it? No, not now, at all. This year at Davos, they've identified some threats to this system. One, number one is fiscal irresponsibility. <laughs> Now, isn't the fiscal irresponsibility the product of the very people at Davos who are central bankers who are committing massive monetary irresponsibility to begin with? Isn't this the pot calling the kettle black? Absolutely, absolutely. And these guys, they, 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 they want to make it look like they're, they're trying by saying, you know, deficits are bad and, you know, we have to cut and, and blah, blah, blah. I'm more of the philosophy that you should carry on spending the fiat, you know, whilst people still value it in exchange. You know, there's no point in trying to contrive a value on something that will be ultimately valueless. You know, so all of this political charade that we have, benefits and all of this nonsense, immigration, all comes, uh, is all born from this, basically. Yeah, you know? and there have been hundreds of fiat currencies over the past yeah. few hundred years. And the average lifespan is something like 27 years, mm. and they, every single one has all ended up achieving their ultimate value of zero. Yes. Uh, with the exception, I think the British pound is one of the, the longer-running fiat. But, of course, they created the Bank of England, yeah. and uh, it's a constitutional monarchy, and it's a, it's a place with very little, you know, what would one would call civil rights. But uh, look, looking at this um, on a global basis over there at the IMF, Christy, Christy mm. Lagarde, was just saying this week that we need to protect ourselves against the deflationary ogres. Okay, once again, echoing Paul Krugman, mm. who says there's deflation, we need to print. Uh, Christy Lagarde is saying, oh, the deflationary ogres, we need to print. The ECB, there's deflation, we need to print. Mark Carney, well, he's not sure about inflation, but we've got to be careful about deflation, we've got to print. Doesn't, def doesn't printing money uh, to feed the zombie banks in fact, isn't that the number one cause of deflation? It will, it will exacerbate things much more than they're thinking from that perspective because they're basically, the way they're doing it is by buying, exchanging cash for bonds. So instead of the set of bankers that used to make money being the, uh, the bankers of the government by basically giving a home for their, their government paper, now the state is basically saying to the people, look, will make you all wealthy. If you just hold on to government bonds, interest rates will go to zero, you'll have these huge profits, and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll make a fortune like all of the bankers have. Let's give you an example. HSBC 
just announced that they've got a 70 billion pound black hole yeah. of debt. So $70 billion worth of bets that they've made are worthless. Mm. They've carried them on their books at 100 cents on the dollar. Mm. But now they're saying, you know what, they're actually worth zero cents on the dollar. Mm. So they'll go to the Bank of England and Mark Carney, and they'll, Mark Carney will take 70 billion of worthless junk that's valued at zero, and he'll give them 70 billion dollars worth of gilts of, of, yes. of, of English treasury bonds, yes. British treasury bonds, yep. and they'll do that swap, yep. and they'll call that quantitative easing, and they'll call that a monetary policy of some type, and HSBC will declare themselves a solvent, but number one, HSBC is insolvent by any accounting measure they're insolvent. Yeah. B, quantitative easing, as we just described, is a massive fraud. Yeah. And C, at what point do you close a bank like HSBC? They launder money for Hezbollah. They launder money for Mexican drug cartels. They've got a $70 billion black hole of debt. They're insolvent. But the government keeps printing money, and that's causing the deflation. It's crowding out real investment. They're supporting a bankrupt institution. Your thoughts? Um, you're, 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 you're right, um, not singling out HSBC per se, but the whole system, you know, um, there, there's no, there's no question that this is all, this is all a, um, it's a, it's a charade, but it's only a charade to the people who are aware. I honestly think they're innocently ignorant, you know, they're not, uh, they're not maliciously sort of evil people in Isn't that Isn't that the sense. basis of a firing squad, that if you, you know, one of, the, <laughs> you, you, one of them in the firing squad doesn't have the bullet, mm. and they all walk away thinking, oh, that was me, I'm innocent. Mm. But yet they're all guilty. Yeah. So the accounting firm, KPMG, at HSBC, did they have the bullet? They, they don't know. Even though they're an accounting firm, they don't know what, who they killed. They, they, know, they know how much they paid for lunch, and they're going to get a write-off against the government. But how many banks they killed this morning? Ah, I don't know. I'm an, I'm an accountant. What would I know? Yeah. All right, we've got about 10 seconds left, actually, running out of time. So we don't have any time. But I take it that you're a, still bullish on gold. Absolutely. Absolutely. And silver more so. And the lower the price goes, the more, the, the more you should be... I think the Americans say stacking them. So, uh, <laughs> keep stacking. Keep stacking them. Keep stacking. <laughs> All right, Sandeep Jaitley, thanks so much for being once again on the Kaiser Report. Thanks, Max. And that's it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Sandeep Jaitley of FiquettaResearch.com. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all. <laughs>